Tyson here with Fuel Systems Research and Development. Um, wanted to show you the inside of this vaporizer. I am sure that there are many of you that are wanting to see exactly what it looks like. So you can completely understand what I'm talking about as I described it. Let's show you down in here. I don't know if you can see down in there or not. But there's not anything in there except for a teeny little bit of fuel. That's it. But this right here is my high temperature silicone gasket. And that seals the lid when I put it on. But this right here, so this is what does most of the work. Like I showed you, this is all my whole valve setup. This is these are my intakes right over here. This one and this one. This right here, um, I have that plugged off, but I have that there as an auxiliary so that um, if I want to test different fuels or multiple fuels at the same time, I have the option to put it in, to put something in through there, um, such as putting a reducer in with a barbed fitting and run some HHO into it. Instead of just doing it through the intake, I want to do it through a separate area. Um, so that's why I have that. I also have it as an, an optional air intake because I wasn't completely sure exactly what I needed for the airflow and there was that option to let a little bit more air in. Um, so yeah, it was meant for multiple things, but this right here, I got it all welded on, um, but this pipe right here is the air intake pipe. Air passes through this pipe. Okay, so when I said that the exhaust um, is a three-quarter inch exhaust, the air intake is a one inch, the exhaust goes inside of the one inch pipe. They're completely isolated from one another. It's totally sealed right here at the top. Um, so there's some stainless steel wool that you can see wrapped around. Obviously it'll be a lot fuller when it's in there because um, I'll have more uh, still wool in and I'm probably going to be putting some some wool in as well a cloth type material that has a high temperature rating um, just to completely eliminate any liquid that may pass through the uh, stainless steel wool um, I know that when I was doing some tests on my lawnmower and I used the socks, that worked extremely well. Um, even though I had like stainless steel wool and different things like that in there to make it so that none of the gas would splash up, the socks really helped make it so that nothing but vapors got into the, uh, the engine. But Okay, so right down here you can see that the exhaust starts right over here comes down it makes a U shape so it turns and then comes back up this other side um, I have it this way for a couple of reasons one because it will allow the exhaust to flow through both intakes but the other reason is as this warms up I'll end up closing one of these intake valves off completely and I'll be running the air in through one side well, obviously, this side right here where exhaust first enters is going to be a little bit warmer than the side over here because um, the air will have already passed through this whole side and cooled the exhaust down a little bit before it comes out this other side. Um, I have it like this as well because the uh, exhaust is flowing the opposite direction that the air would be coming in on this side when I test it. I wanted to see if that had any different type of effect. So far, I haven't found that it does. Um, but I may possibly be able to, to find that, that it does in the future. Um, so I just didn't know if like airflow going the opposite direction of an exhaust would cause any type of a change or a, or a magnetic field to occur or, you know, something to that effect, a plasma reaction, kind of like they talk about with the GEET reactor. Um, but I don't have a rod going through. 
inside it's just the exhaust but right here let me show you how small sorry out of focus how small of an area that is that is an extremely small gap that the air travels through so it is forced to go against this exhaust pipe right here and heat up really really well um, I have I didn't solder this um, what I did is I I put it together with some high temperature silicone that's rated at like or above 500 degrees I believe um, so that I don't have problems with melting I wasn't sure if I know that there's some solder out there that can that's rated um, about 500 degrees 600 degrees or so but I didn't want to chance that melting when I'm doing my testing so I just used the high temperature silicone that's rated at a higher temperature than the uh, the solder was so that's why I went with that I may end up soldering it once I get exact temperature readings um, of the exhaust as far as how how hot it is I may end up end up soldering that if it doesn't reach a high enough temperature to melt the the solder so but you can see on this side too the fine gap that's between there so that's pretty much it guys um, that's what the inside looks like nothing more to it than that I will be adding stuff to this as I go um, my car is pretty much junk unfortunately I'm gonna be cutting the exhaust system out of it I believe I'm gonna give the um, catalytic converter to Steve GreenfuelH2O.com I know he's getting some other ones but so that he can test the uh, HHO heating with the catalytic converter uh, I may keep the one in my that I have from my Jeep or buy one to test things myself because I have some of my own ideas as far as what I would like to do with that but um, I'm cutting the exhaust system off so that I can use the muffler for this and I'll be tying my car muffler in right here where you see that exhaust exit port um, to make it so that it's really quiet when it runs because I don't want to be getting phone calls from neighbors that are pissed off because it's so loud um, it's the last thing I need but um, I guess you might want to see the the inside of of this right here the the float reservoir or the the fuel level reservoir there's really not much to it um, all it is is a manual float valve it's made out of PVC and stainless steel um, all the any of the metal on it is stainless steel, but the rest of it's just like a PVC material. And I have these wing nuts to make it quick to take apart. That way if anybody ever stops by and wants to see it or whatever, I don't have to have tools with me to take this whole thing apart. Alright, that's all there is to it. Just have that float valve in there. It's a little bit loose, um, so it can move around well. But and actually, um, yeah. you tighten that down a little bit again. This cold weather made it so it shrunk, but yeah, that'll just sit right there, and you can see that there's nothing in here except for a little bit of fuel down there at the bottom because I need to make this fuel exit line I need to drop it down a little bit lower in the container um, to make it run better make this thing work better I was afraid that if I put it up that high that it wouldn't work as well and I was right so I should have just done it lower to begin with but oh well it's an easy fix so yeah that's that's what what's in there but this is Tyson with sorry Fuel System Research and Development um, hope you guys enjoyed me showing you all this stuff 
But that's it. Over and out. See ya.